Hey, welcome to Chandu.org on YouTube. In this video, we will learn 10 formatting tricks only Excel experts know. These are not your usual shortcuts like Control-1 would format a cell or one of those kind of things. These are the ones that when you see a colleague or client implement it, you start wondering, oh, I wonder how they did it. So I'm going to show these tricks in the spreadsheet. So let's jump over there. The first one is a center across selection. Now, not many of you know this. So if you have something very long and you want to kind of fit it into a bunch of cells, the normal tendency is to just select everything and merge them. And that does kind of merge all these cells and put the value there. But it is also what it does is whenever you select the cell, any cell in this thing, you are selecting the entire merged cell and the value, although it appears like it is from B4 to F4, the value is really in B4. So if I go to a formula and then say B4, I get the value. But if I go here and then say um, D4, I'll get zero because technically D4 is blank. So um, most people I try to avoid merged cells for these kind of reasons, right? It appears that a cell has a value, but it doesn't really have a value. So how do you not merge, but still get the thing in the middle of that selection? Very simple. You select the entire thing, press control one or right click and go to format cells. And from alignment, you just select center across selection option. What this does is it will take the text that is there and then it will just center it across those cells. So none of these cells are merged now, but the text is actually appearing from here. It is kind of indented all the way so that it is centered along there. So you can do this for one. You can just do it for a really long section as well. And that would give you center across selection. So this is one number one trick. Let's go to the number two which is merge in a mul multiple in a go. I just said that merging cells is not a good practice, but sometimes you got to merge, right? And you want to merge these two cells, but also these two and these two. If you select everything and merge, what happens is you will kind of uh, get this warning saying merging cells only keeps the upper left value and discards other. So you will lose all these other values, right? So we can't really just select everything and merge, but there is a trick you can select all and instead of clicking on the merge, if you go, there is a merge across option. And this does exactly that. It will create uh, 10 or 12 multiple merged cells. This is one of my favorite ways of getting merge happen in multiple places in a single shot, especially if I am creating a complex dashboard or a report where I want to have um, things merged in a uniform fashion. Number three, no decimals greater than one. Let's say you have some product prices that are listed like this and some prices are in cents. So it's 36 cents here, but some of these prices are 4.2, 2.66. And, um, you know, for some weird purpose, you want to just see the decimal point only if the number is below one. Otherwise, you just want to see the dollar figure alone, dollar two rather than 2.16. So how do you format it like that? Well, you can go and select all of this, press control one to format and from the number options, you can remove the decimal points because we don't want decimal points. What that does is it will also remove the decimal point from these very small numbers that are less than one. So it's not an ideal solution. I'll go back uh, to our format screen and I'll show you one special trick. This trick has uh, multiple uses and you can apply that in other situations as well. So instead of doing it as a number format, we will do a custom format and write a rule here. The custom formatting is, is a place where you can set up rules so that a number can be displayed in a specific way if it meets some conditions. The default conditions are negative numbers, positive numbers and zeros, but we can use this to set up different conditions. So for example, we'll open a square bracket and then say less than one and then we will say 0, 0.00. That means I want a number with two decimal points. Else, I want just the number, okay? So you see what is happening. If the number is less than one, then it will have number and two decimal points. Else, it will just give me the number portion. 
so this will give you that trick where those small numbers will have the decimal value and everything else is just rounded according to the value so that's number third trick. number fourth one is thousands and millions in format so let's say you got some values here and you would want to see them in thousands so 671,880,000 like that so i'll just keep the values as they are i'll copy paste them in these two places we will format this in thousands so we'll select control one and we don't have to divide them by 1000 or anything we just go into the format option and from here i can go and apply the number formatting that i want so we can go to custom and where it says the format this is the format it, it has it has a number thousand separator followed by more digits now what if you just leave the thousand separator and remove everything else this will automatically just keep the value 671 in thousands because the comma indicates that it's in thousands so 671 and then you can just put in double quotes k to indicate it's in thousands so that is how you can get thousands for millions it is a similar thing we will have to for million is thousand thousand so we will have to do two commas and then do a couple of decimal points because these numbers are not in millions they are kind of in between so we would uh, get some decimal precision as well uh, i guess and then we could add a zero at the beginning i think that will add a decimal point and then we will put just m so this will do it like that i think the the zero is messing up those things so we'll remove that and we would get this so that's how you can do thousands and millions the next one is a new line in the cell again this is something that is not very tricky but not not often people know this let's say you have a very long text and you want to get a line break so that it appears in a couple of lines now if you go to the place where you want a line break and you just press enter excel thinks you're done with writing in the cell so it will just take you to the next cell so the trick is rather than pressing enter you want to press alt enter so hold down the alt key and then press enter and that will introduce a new line character whenever there is a new line excel automatically applies word wrap and it will also wrap the thing around because this width of the cell is too small to contain the full thing it kind of went into multiple lines but if you select three or four and you know merge or something you will see both lines appearing like that so that's that the next one is a very very simple trick which is uh, if you have got let's say a table like this and you want to have similar widths elsewhere for example i have this data here i'm just going to copy this and paste here now what happens is i will get the data but the table is not following the same pattern that is the width of the column is not consistent like the way it is here so one way is you can just copy the width as well so when you are pasting you can go right click while keeping the selection copied go to paste special and then click on that little icon there keep source column widths and that would do the trick because we just want the values we don't want that blue color formatting or anything we paste the values we right click we can go to paste special and instead of all we will just say column width and uh, that will keep the things as this is and it will give you a similar set of column widths unfortunately there is no similar thing to do the row heights but uh, width is something that i often use when i'm preparing a report and i want to have consistent formatting across multiple pages next one is again a very tricky number formatting trick skip zeros and labels let's say you have some products and defect per thousands of units and uh, this is what it is so we got some products here some products do not have any defects they are really well made so they have zero de defects for thousand units and the chart will show the label as zero and let's just say you don't like to show the zero you want to omit those zeros but you want to keep these labels one way you might be tempted to actually calculate an extra column called labels and use if conditions and whatnot but if it is a simple thing like excluding zeros we can apply the same rule as earlier which is uh, we show decimal point when it is less than zero one else we ignore the decimal point so we can apply the similar thing select the labels 
press control 1 to format the labels and from the label formatting area go to number now in general the label will follow a standard general formatting thing and the format code would say general we will first delink it to the source and here we will just type the format code that we want the format code that we want is we want the number to show up unless it is zero now you might just want to use square brackets again but for zero you don't really have to do anything you can simply say 0, 0.00 for positive numbers and for everything else there is no negative defects per hundred thousand units it's not possible so for everything else just don't show a value so to do that we will have 0, 0.00 semicolon and then we will follow by two more semicolons and then add that what this does is it will show only positive values and everything else including negative values will be ignored so because between the semicolons we have not specified anything excel things i'm not going to show this it's a very classic trick and you can even use that to hide away something in a in a range of cells i'll just quickly show you this was not a tip that i was planning to share but let's say you got some values here and you don't want to see the values but the values need to be there for some formulas or whatever you just don't want to see them on the screen you can select that entire range press ctrl 1 to format and go to custom and from here just press c3 semicolons that means whether it is a positive negative or whatever zero just don't show me anything and then the values are gone boom but they're still there if you select the cell you can see them in the formula bar it's just that they're not shown on the display the next one is align and distribute this is a classic a formatting trick that many people are either not familiar or they are not 100 percent sure how to use them let's say you got a bunch of charts like this and you want to perfectly align them because when things are perfectly aligned and sized they look good so one simple trick is you can just select all the charts this is the first step that you want to do especially for shapes like this go to shape format and make sure their width and height is same the height is same but the width seem to be inconsistent that's why that is blank i'm just gonna try some width like two two seems to be too short so i'll go with five um, or maybe four i'll just reduce it a little bit yep 3.5 and then we will just select the top ones holding control key you can multiple select the charts and then you can go to shape format use the alignment tools to align them so i will align everything to the top that will make them like that then we will select these two we will align them to the left so that this is aligned in the correct place and then we can select these three and we will do the same which is we will align them to the bottom okay next uh, next we can select all of these three and then we will use the distribution to space them out evenly distribute horizontally would space them out while keeping them selected you can also move them up uh, if you hold the shift key it will keep the other thing constant so when you are moving you're you're not moving like this if you are just moving in that line and then we will do the same for the top charts distribute horizontally and now everything is properly aligned and it's easier to focus on the information without feeling confused about why there is inconsistent spacing so that's the next one the ninth trick is total hours so let's say you got some check-in and check-out times and you want to calculate the total duration it's a very simple formula we will just subtract one minus another and then we will get the uh total durations here but this is showing as 1.54 indicating 1.54 days let's just say you want to see this in hours before i show the formula i'll just replace the random formulas here uh, so that the times will not change so 1.54 i want to just see this in the total hours to do this we just select everything press ctrl 1 now if i just want to see one one day 5.54 in hours then we can use hours minutes format but 1.54 total would would be about 36 37 hours so i want to see that information to do that all you have to do is within square brackets put h for hours and then mm for minutes and you will get the total hours so this is another trick where you normally use h for 
hours in the day but if you use it in the square brackets then it will show you total hours uh, including days each day having 24 hours number 10 is a very very simple trick again many people are confused by this let's say you have a spreadsheet that has some very long numbers a classic long number is uh, your credit card number or something that is like a very long number let's just say you have a credit card number like one two three four one two three four one two three four five six seven eight right 16 digits but if you press enter excel immediately sees oh this is a long number i'm going to turn this into a scientific format and if you notice we typed five six seven eight it also loses the precision right so this is a pain especially if you are working with large numbers in excel so how do you fix this well, one simple trick is you just select the cells where you want to keep such large numbers and go to home rather than general, just change the formatting of those cells to text. Now what happens is whatever you type in those cells, Excel will not treat them as numbers, it will just treat them as text. So you can potentially type any large number and it will remain like that. One thing to keep in mind is you will not be able to do regular operations on these things. You can only do text operations. That means you cannot sum up this with 10. It won't work because Excel thinks this is just text. So it will ignore that and you'll return the value as 10. So you can't do like arithmetic operations on those numbers, but everything else is fair. Code. So that's all for my formatting tricks that only Excel experts would normally know. I hope you found this useful. I'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye-bye.